Hey, what's up? It's Michael Whitaker. Thanks for joining me on this video. So in the mid 90s, I landed my first gig uh, scoring a TV show called The Power Rangers. And it was super exciting. I had just finished uh, UCLA uh, studying film scoring and uh, I went on to be a staff composer for ABC Family scoring a lot of different TV shows. Uh, but uh, ever since then, I think there's five main areas that uh, I've had to master to keep an ongoing career in film and television and as a music producer as well. So I'm going to spell it out for you and hopefully it will help you uh, identify some maybe some holes in your game and, and why maybe you're not working or as you're training the things that you want to make sure that you know that you know so that you will be fully prepared for a career in film and TV. All right, in this video, I'm going to make the analogy of having a car dealership uh, to help us understand a little bit more about the areas of music that you really need to have under your belt. And the first thing, uh, if you were to have a car dealership, you really have to understand cars, right? Like there's no way you're going to take your car someplace like to a mechanic uh, or to get it repaired or to ask questions if you haven't had some sort of training on how that car works like the mechanic knows the car inside and out and that's the that's the foundation for him to fix your problem right so at the end of the day in music the first area we're going to make sure that we we have to have under belt uh, is music theory and our basic musicianship okay so just like a mechanic uh, if he didn't have an understanding of your car and, and uh, if he didn't understand what your brand, your model is, uh, he would have a tough time fixing it because he probably wouldn't uh, know even where to start. And it's the same thing in music, right? So it, in film scoring, you need to understand the basics and the foundations of music theory and harmony. Uh, for example, if I was to say, uh, hey, what's the key signature to B flat major? Like, if you don't know that right off the top of your head, it's probably a signal to yourself that uh, you didn't you you kind of bypass some of these uh, areas uh, in music theory. Uh, for example, what are the chords and the chord qualities of of certain modes? Major, minor, uh, Lydian, for example. What are the modes? Um, what are the basic scales that go alongside? of those modes and those scale degrees of each mode. So every mode and, and has a different sense of, of what emotionally it brings to music. Understanding that is paramount to being a composer. And I think even as a music producer, you can use those elements to bring the music to life. One of the other areas uh, would be understanding the orchestra, the range of the instruments. Those basic things uh, are, are critical, the articulations. Uh, those are the foundations of creating a score, right? And the great thing about these things are that it's totally learnable, right? It's, this is not some mystery that um, you need to sift through tons of YouTube videos to find out. It's like, no, you can go take a class at the university and get this foundation down and get it out of the way. So I always tell my students, look, make sure that you know you know uh, the basic foundations of theory. Get it out of the way so it's not something you're struggling with. Like what chords are in this key? What chords are in this mode? Uh, that should be uh, something that you don't have to deal with anymore. And it's something that can be learned, I think, fairly quickly. Um, no, you're not going to be a high level of music theory uh, as if you went to a four-year school maybe and went through, you know, through music theory four and you're doing uh, crazy analysis. That's not really that necessary to be a film composer. But having that foundation is... So make sure you know that you know uh, the foundations of music theory. All right, so the second area of mastery you're going to need uh, to be a film and television composer, uh, as well as a music producer, is technology. All right, I know a lot of people that have master's degree in music, 
but they have no idea what they're doing when it comes to the computer, sample libraries, uh, making mock-ups, that sort of thing. Um, so if that's you, if you have a high level of music knowledge, but the technology thing uh, wasn't there for you, that's something that you're going to have to have a handle on, especially in today's market. Because most of the time, uh, with smaller uh, projects, as you're coming up through the ranks especially, you're not going to have the luxury of a, a live orchestra, and they're going to expect you to make a convincing mock-up uh, with your music, right? And also, as you're creating, uh, music isn't just anymore just about orchestra. As a matter of fact, that's becoming less and less important as younger generations of directors and producers come up you have to have an, uh, an idea of technology to create sounds that are not orchestra-based. Maybe they're synth-based. Uh, maybe they're based on an era of music like the 80s or something like that. So understanding technology, understanding your gear uh, is really important. Part of that also is having the gear to uh, be able to create these realistic uh, mock-ups and interesting sounds. Just like a mechanic, we go back to the car dealership uh, example, the mechanic's got to have the right tools to fix the car, right? So ed every car has different set of tools. Uh, I'm definitely not handy in that way, but I can imagine that if you don't have the right tools, it's going to be really impossible to make the, the repairs in a timely fashion. So it's the same goes with music. You're going to need a, a good quality computer, you're going to need good sample libraries and um, a good, you know, a good starting base to make a, a quality mock-up. You're probably going to need some sort of synthesizer um, plugins to create everything from pads to synth bases and, you know, stuff for modern scoring. You're going to need percussion and you're going to need uh, a sampler and um, all that can get super expensive, but it doesn't have to be. There's a lot of ways to do it on the cheap that you can get really killer results, okay? This is something I teach in my Film Scoring Academy at filmscoreseminar.com, but we get really deep into how to make great mock-ups and how to uh, make your stuff come to life. All right, the next pillar of music and, and the thing that you really have to ha have a handle on is music production. And what I mean by that is really understanding your DAW, understanding signal flow, and how to output your, your sounds as stems, how to mix and create a, uh, a really good sounding uh, mix and, and score that will hold its own uh, without sending it off to somebody else. Uh, music production is kind of like when they're building a car, right? There's a designer. He's making it look great. The aesthetics are really important. And as you put all your music together uh, in your DAW, that putting all the elements together in a cohesive fashion, uh, understanding the mix and, um, and making it sound amazing is really kind of critical uh, to the delivery, right? So it, when they deliver that final car to the customer, it looks amazing. It is spotless. It's perfect. And in the same way, understanding music production, taking some classes on how to mix, uh, watch some YouTube videos on mixing for orchestra, you know, having those tools, production tools um, that uh, will allow you to have really high quality, non-demo sounding results. That's really important. And as a side note on this, make sure that there's somebody in your life that will give you some honest feedback on your production. So everybody thinks their music is great, but kind of the standard would be to listen to some uh, scores that are out there and also listen to uh, all these sample libraries have uh, really amazing demos on them. So, um, you know, they, they get really great composers to uh, do the mock-ups of their libraries. And so that, that might be a good gauge for you and put your music up against and say, how's my, my sound stacking up against these, these cues? Because that'll give you something to aim for, something to shoot for. And then hopefully you can have some sort of a mentor in your life that can help you 
uh, listen to what you're creating and help you make some tweaks to get to that higher level. All right, area number four is gonna be your music business chops. And it really doesn't have to be music business, it's just business chops. Uh, I find that composers um, that go through my program, they love to make music, but they don't love to do the business part of it. It is really a 50-50 um, thing you have to do. So 100% musician, 100% business person. So that means you have to get out there. You have to go to these uh, film festivals. You have to meet direct directors, producers. You have to do all the things you need to do to market yourself. Look, you, you are a product. Just like that car dealership, their car is a product. They have to get that product somehow for people to see it, uh, for them to be interested to come in and look at it. And it's the same, same way for you. People won't show up by themselves. Uh, in most cases, unless you're just extremely gifted. But even then, there are so many talented people. So uh, you have to work on your your delivery, the way if you're a very internal person, maybe you have to work on the way you approach uh, people to get them excited to work with you, right? Um, as well, you, you're going to have to work on your marketing strategy from social media to, uh, you know, your, your website and the way you deliver music and your demo. Your demo needs to be top notch and you need to know how to deliver and who to deliver to. These are all some things we, we talk about. We make a strategy in my film scoring program because it's really critical because you can have all this gear, you can have all this knowledge. And at the end of the day, if you're not going to do the work, you're not going to do the business work, uh, you're not going to be working enough probably to sustain yourself over the years. So it is a big part of my day and a big part of my, uh, my job as a composer is to uh, find new clients, find new projects. Fortunately, I've done this long enough where every year the same people seem to be coming back to me. And so I have a baseline of projects usually and that's where you want to get to right but if you think of music business as uh, you have a product that you are selling to the entire planet it's a it's a much better look than saying hey I want to be the next John Williams composer uh, because uh, you have to look at yourself at, and the world as your market every business in the world needs music for their videos for their internal videos they need it for commercials, uh, videographers, um, they all need music. Music libraries need music. Indie films need music. Television shows need music. And of course, feature films need music. But there are thousands and thousands and thousands of projects that need music. So don't think you can't provide or there's not work out there for you. There, there is. But if you're not doing everything you can to reach people, then how are they going to know about you? And how are they, they most importantly going to feel comfortable with you? They don't just pick somebody out of random thin air. They need somebody they have a relationship with. And they're going to feel comfortable uh, you coming in their project that they've already spent thousands and thousands, maybe millions on. And they're going to hand you their baby. So as a composer, you have to really make people feel comfortable that you are the, the guy or girl for this project. It's, it's super important. Uh, and uh, we could talk more, more about that in the program, but how you can come across as the right person for the job. It's really critical. Okay, so the final thing that you really need to have a handle on, I think, as a composer or producer, and unfortunately, this is the one that not everybody's going to get. And that is your natural ability or your natural creativity, whatever it is that God-given ability that you have or that, that ability that, that uh, comes out of your life circumstance. For example, maybe you were, you were born in a culture that you understand uh, Middle Eastern music. Well, you have a leg up on me because anything I do, I'm going to have to do research. And so, um, 
any kind of ethnic music, any kind of music that maybe st- maybe you're a rock person or a hip hop person, that gives you an a, a leg up in certain areas, right? So really play to your strengths and tr- try and develop yourself in those areas that you're really naturally above most people based on your life experience, right? Unfortunately for some people, they they don't have a natural ability in music creatively. Maybe they're a good player, but what they write is is just not naturally that interesting. Uh, it's not their gifting. So there's a certain level of natural ability, just like on an instrument, um, that you're gonna you're gonna have or not have. But you can certainly get to the place where you could be working just by. Uh, learning and emulating different styles of music, right? It's really important. Also, I would say in this area, uh, understanding scoring to picture is really important if you're going to be a film composer. And what I mean by that is that you can watch a ton of YouTube videos. There's a lot of good ones out there and people out there trying to show you how to make mock-ups and, you know, how to articulate sounds uh, well Uh, with different sample libraries, and all that's good and important to learn. But if you haven't scored a lot of video, if you don't understand the psychology of how uh, chords work and getting into somebody's, uh, a character's head, and how to morph those emotions over time uh, as the scene changes, writing into cuts, uh, understanding how videography works, so that your score can uh, bring to life these elements. Uh, that's a, a necessary thing and, a, and a, a high level thing you have to know as a film composer. So if you're just working on really cool stuff that might work for a music library or trailers, that's, that's not necessarily gonna get you gigs scoring TV or movies, right? Because you're, you're not prepared yet for it. You have to prepare yourself. So uh, another shameless plug for my program and why it's different than a lot of them is that you're actually scoring projects. I have you scoring 10 different projects, score to picture, you're getting feedback, you're learning the psychology of chords and voicings and how they work and interact with characters and different styles from comedy to um, action, sci-fi, all these different kind of styles you may come across. That kind of stuff is really important that you get a handle on. And it's something that you would learn if you went uh, to school, like say to UCLA or USC uh, uh, to under, or Berkeley to learn film scoring. But oftentimes they don't give you enough of this kind of training and enough of the depth of how chords work and interact with, with emotion. And that is something you really have to dig into on your own to get to a level where you feel really comfortable doing that. Okay, hopefully this has been helpful for you. Understand maybe some holes that you have in your game and some some things you can do to really up your levels so that uh, you will be ready as a composer or producer. Don't stop writing every day. Work hard, work hard both at your technical expertise as well as your business uh, expertise as well. And I know you're going to do well if you put the work in. And I hope to see you on the next video or in one of my classes.